Hello, and welcome to the Common Geeking Program. We are a book club style podcast where each episode we discuss a different topic from our own geeky and nerdy perspectives. I can't hear what Chowder's singing right now, so I'm going to ignore him and keep on. Wait, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, no. Okay, so wait, Jeff. You get three guesses. Price. I bet you can figure it out just guessing what he was singing based on what we're talking I, about today. I literally could not fucking hear anything that he was saying, and I have no idea of any affiliated Shang-Chi songs, so... You gotta zoom out further than Shang-Chi. If anyone is singing a song on this particular episode, what song is it? I have no idea. Everybody I, was kung fu fighting. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was like, I did not know what direction to fucking pull that in. Yeah. I was like, I have no idea what where you expect me to go with this. All right. Well, well uh, that, but yes, uh, I am your host, Jeff Levitt. Collapse under its own weight. And this week we are talking about Shang-Chi and the Legend Wait, of the Ten really? Rings. In, in case you hadn't figured that out yet. Um, actually, no, I, I'm going to switch it around. Just, we're going to be talking about Kung Fu Panda today. Um, yeah, you know what? Oh, God, those are good movies. You know, we'll talk about it's Kung the Fu Panda. Destiny it's episode all over again, except I haven't <laughs> spent 1,400 hours watching Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's just really a moral failing on your part, <laughs> You throw, uh, you but throw yeah. the term moral failing around with a little too much abandon for me. <laughs> I think in this specific regard, that is not even a gray area. It is a, <laughs> a, a, a crime to have not spent 1,400 hours watching the Kung Fu Panda movies. But no, we are talking about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, the uh, 25th, I believe, movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, wow. And this time around, I am joined by two fellow nerds who can introduce them damn selves. Oh, Maybe. Like a... I thought, apparently no. not. Sorry, I was picking. <laughs> Listen, I had crunch. I, my, I just did an edit. It spilled over, so my lunch window was abbreviated. Uh, but my name, however, is not because it's Colin. It's pretty short as it is. Uh, and I just had a delicious chicken sandwich with jalapenos on it. Hi, yeah. I am. Time will, or as others oh like to call God. me, Master Chowder. <laughs> in case, in case anybody was like ever in doubt that only white people can make the mistakes like this, this is <laughs> evidence to the contrary. Oh God, yeah. no, this is bad. actually. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop that stick now. <laughs> All right, friends. We are gonna start off by summarizing and discussing I mean, it is our topic movie. for the day. For sure, it is. Yeah. And uh, then we will end with a little rating section where we decide if uh, if our topic was enjoyable and worthwhile. But uh, yeah, you guys want to move on into the summary? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, you want to you want to hit me with a basic description off the bat while I drink my drink and try to hide my burps from the microphone? Yeah, for sure. I am I'm kind of ambivalent as to which way we should decide to do this. Um, the the way that I'm leaning towards is just describe the plot of the movie as is, and then get into like how it differs from some of the origins in the comics or stuff like that. Yeah. Or would you yeah. rather set set up some of those ground rules before, or not ground rules, but some of those well, you know? I I really enjoyed our Black Widow conversation, and I mean, f for anybody still listening, anybody out there, uh, we do the MCU <laughs> movies so much, not just because we're like this is the best thing ever, but because it's just a thing that we all reliably. Uh, consume yeah, and can discuss in. and have opinions yeah, yeah. on uh, and I like having conversations with them about you that said I really enjoyed our conversation on Black Widow a few episodes ago um, and I think that that was um, we just sort of followed the plot through and like took breaks for conversations that said this is a little more rooted in the specific comic narrative that I know nothing about so yeah, I, I, mean, I can see it going either way, depending on what you've got to say. I, I'd also yeah, I be think... okay with just like going through the story, and when we hit interesting divergences from the comics, you just stop and hit me with it. Yeah, yeah. I just, there's just one aspect of it that I think is going to take up a considerable amount of conversation. So it's, yeah. I feel like probably we should wait till after. Yeah, the, I mean, the, I feel like I'll like interject with that. like some stuff while you're describing. Like... Yeah. Uh, okay. This will be cut out. Yeah, right. like, I'm so, definitely let's, let's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings is uh, well, our main character, whose name is Shang-Chi. Uh, he is the son of basically a, uh, a Chinese crime boss who in the movie is named, I believe, Zhu Wang Wei or something like that. Let me yep. look. And yeah. uh, he, um, he runs a secret evil organization that uh, 
secretly controls Wind the world. world from the shadows. That would be number 20 yeah. of these secret evil organizations yeah. that controls the world from <laughs> so, the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly so, a I lack mean, the, of the movie, you, you, the you, you, you think these secret evil organizations that control the world from the shadows would... To be fair, I feel like that's most of mostly the fault of like several of the, you know, more recent organizations before this being introduced, because this one is like literally somewhat foreshadowed in the very first in, in, Marvel yeah, movie. Yeah, it is it is yeah. there in <laughs> Iron Man, so like definitely I, I agree with Jeff's sentiment on that. So the way that this movie does it, and I'm gonna my opinion is on a lot of I just wanna list out just uh, some of these evil organizations. Oh yeah, the, yeah, actually yeah. that'd be that'd be great. The hand Hydra, the Widows. We talked about the Widows last mm-hmm. last time we mm-hmm. with the yep. Black Widow movie. Uh, we got uh, that organization Loki's a part of. Uh, we got that uh, the TBA. We got yeah. Sh- Shield. I mean, Shield is an organization that's secretive. Uh, then we got uh, whatever that Russian organization was. Uh, Wakanda's got spies all over the place. <laughs> the- there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, everyone's got spies. That's not as much to say that, you know, like, I agree with you on, like, the, the sentiment of, like, the Widows and the TBA and the, and the um, you know, the Hy- and Hydra and stuff like that. But not not every single example, you know, like, but there's the going to be that different Wakanda organizations. Is, 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 is a powerful global influence that is literally yeah, yeah, hidden yeah. from everyone until they decide to, you know open the curtain yeah exactly. so, okay, i want to talk about true, but it's mostly sequence. it's okay but the, wakanda is like a nation that is very isolationist like they're not influencing a ton on that, you know like that's, that's kind of the whole point okay you know? so back to shang chi i want to get yes. into this into this intro sequence because um we don't actually start with shang chi we start with his dad yeah. In a flashback narrated by uh, who we come to understand is Shang Chi's mother after a few minutes, yeah. where <clears throat> Shang Chi's dad it said that he he showed you see him like leading an army against um, a, a a stronghold a keep maybe a thousand years ago. The ten rings are literally just like metal rings on his arms that glow and do big magic shit, and also give him immortality. He he is like over a thousand years and give years him old. immortality. Yeah, importantly, yes, very, that's why yeah, that the, is pretty crucial. A thousand years ago is relevant. <laughs> Very thin montage of maybe three examples of the of his organization, the Ten Rings, um, evolving over time. I think we see them yeah. like throw a French guy off a building, and then we see him blowing a gun up, being blow- shot, and then we're in the present day. Oh yeah, and blowing up a building in like London, and also blowing up a government yeah. building. Yeah, and, it's, and I think that's a yeah, pretty big but one. like it's just those three hits, and that's like that's a thousand years summed up right there. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised that they, because, like, there was a line in that intro dialogue about, like, you know, how the organization spread to different parts of the globe and got different sects and stuff like that, which and it's, I'm it's assuming... Just not part of it at all after that. Right, like, they don't really, they don't, like, not even in this montage, they don't show, like the organization like kidnapping iron man in the first yep. movie which is like well, the, that, the first that kind of makes sense it, right? because that was 2008 yeah. and where we land is 1996 where yeah. um that's right. uh, yeah. i'm probably just gonna call him the mandarin because of iron man 3 and because i uh did you look up his character's name yeah his name is uh zhu wenwu spelled x-u-w-e-n-w-u which okay. is not a name from the comics and we'll get into why that is later um, but and, that and is it should the, be noted yeah. that there are like two, two like previous copycat ten rings. Like we got the ones from the first, first movie, but we also have the ones from the third movie. Oh yeah, another secret evil organization, extremists. But well, yeah, do you, do you mean uh, uh, the oh the third movie as in Iron Man three? Iron Man three, yeah. The third yeah, Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, okay. Movie. Yeah, well, that comes up directly related to the plot in this movie. Yeah, I don't they do think that the that. Ten Rings in Iron Man 1 was a copycat I do. Yeah, I, I think the implication is that the Ten Rings was responsible with it. Kevin Feige has said yeah. as much in interviews. Um, well, no, I mean, they they it says it has that logo. Like, they're called the Ten Rings in the movie. Yes, like, no, not, yes, I know. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I think Kevin Feige has said explicitly that was the Ten Rings we're talking about in this movie. Uh, so it was I, just, I, you know, the, a not sect a of it from a different nation. Okay, so you know, the guy yeah. in the very first yeah. Iron Man movie, not a copycat. Third movie, copycat. Okay. Yeah, that, yes. and that that was all AIM and and Extremis and all that whole separate AIM thing. Ex- but that comes AIM up and later extremis. in this movie. Yeah, no. Two, two, AIM and Extremis. Two, two secret organizations controlling two. the world from the shadows. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> well, they're not so really controlling. That's more the of a world. military they're just contract. Like, okay, let's keep up. We got to anyway, keep on barreling yeah. through Shang Chi. <laughs> we can't tear apart the whole Marvel universe every time we talk about a new movie. It has flaws. But yeah. in 1996, uh, Zhu Wenwu decides to um, pursue a myth about an ancient power and goes through this magic moving woods and meets uh, a very pretty lady who can beat him in a fight. And guys, I loved watching this fight when she's fucking yeah. airbending the leaves and like yeah, the know. weird moment when like <laughs> she has him bent over and he's looking up smiling at her it's so preposterous and i love that I'm, so I mean, much also, it was like, gorgeous and like uh, uh, really effective character building and also i mean i just i kind of get where he's coming from i love the kind of woman that could get yeah. my ass you know and like you can just see in his face Especially like, when you know i am so turned on right now Exactly. Imagine the thousand year boner that he is rocking right there. Oh my there. god. But uh, no, I mean that that's one thing that like we can talk about a little bit later too, but like is is kind of a uh, an overall motif in the movie is that the the fight choreography is very dancey because it yeah. you know yeah. it follows yep. like Wuxia you know this kind of Jackie Chan film. philosophy yeah. of like making the the fight choreography like very interesting in terms of, like mm-hmm. not that normal you know action movie fights aren't interesting yeah, no, you, but it's but like don't, very don't just make it functional add some flair to it. No, no, this yeah. this is very this is very refreshing compared to Black Widow because, like, there's no yeah. shaky cam. The camera is very clear, and you always have a good idea of yep. what's going on in the action, the, and I mm-hmm. love that. It's great. Yep. She had, So she ends up beating him in the fight, and then it, like, sort of jump cuts to them having a kid together. One of the craziest yep. smash cuts of all time, in my opinion, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we fast forward to, like— you get um, the idea. To, to the woman telling Shang-Chi, like, hey, yeah, we serve this this dragon guardian, and here's my pendant, and I love you. And then we immediately cut to Shang-Chi as an adult living in San Francisco. And that's that's yep. how that's how we get all this information. Uh, and I, I have some issues with the structure of the movie that begin here that I think I'm going to unravel as we go along. Yeah, but, like, no, we do I, I jump straight I to this. I know where you're going with, and I agree. But, yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, so now we're in San Francisco with uh, Shimu Lu uh, playing uh, Shang-Chi proper as an adult. Who is a, yeah, who is, has, you know, Americanized his name to Sean. Sean. Because uh, <laughs> he's hiding from his father. And Sean! He, uh, he's, <laughs> Sean! 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 <laughs> we're now going to spend five minutes yelling Sean's video, name, but... hoping that listeners know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, we're fucking. He's got his uh, his partner in crime here. They're working as valets. Who is uh, whose name is Katie, and she's played by Aquafino, who pretty much plays herself in every fucking movie I've seen her in, and yep. I, it's never a problem. She's just great and very. I'm funny. gonna say this for the first time now. I'm gonna say it ten more times in this episode. Uh, while she's a valet here, every moment after this, her pants are phenomenal. A hundred percent of the time in this film, excellent pants, pants game, grade A pants game. I was not paying attention to Aquafino's pants, but you gotta watch this movie again. Yep, it no, very good, all very very good. So yeah, sorry. I continue. also, <laughs> I also really like the explanation of uh of her being like, you know, her usefulness in the plot of this movie is that she's like a really really good driver, and the explanation of that is because she likes to take like the cars that she's supposed to valet into the parking lot and fucking yeah, go she, like drifting she, with them. She that fucking is very Ferris, good. they Ferris Bueller the shit out of this thing. I was pretty surprised at the restraint that they didn't have the slow mo car flying over the hill over top of the camera yeah, yeah, like yeah. Ferris Bueller. Uh, but yeah, no, they take this really nice car out for a really crazy spin. So basically, you know, where the plot goes from this point, you know, they kind of they have a few interactions with their friends where their friends are basically like, hey, why are you two just valets? Like, why aren't you doing anything more substantial with your life? Yeah, right. And are very judgy. And then like all all petty people, they respond to the call to grow up by getting drunk and going to karaoke. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, they end up, you know, they're on like a city bus, basically. And uh, they get attacked by by a bunch of people, one of which has a fucking knife for a hand. That's Razor Fist. Uh, he's a minor character yeah. in this movie. But I'd really like to know where the fuck his goddamn sword comes from when it comes right? out of his arm. Right. It's, but... longer than, it's longer than his entire arm. And yeah. when it slides out, you're like, that came out of somewhere. Like, have you ever watched right. someone swallow a sword? It is going somewhere. And there's nowhere for this to go. 
I mean, how it, is he? I guess mm. it's I guess it's like in his forearm, but like it's so much longer than his forearm, though. It's incredibly long, and also like and and also if he like replaced his bone to have the make room for the sword, yeah. how is he moving his arm? Yeah, he'd right. have a yeah, floppy yeah. arm. The, all, can we talk about also like the the edge of this thing is constantly like glowing orange hot and like slicing through metal on the bus like it's butter. But then like mm-hmm. they can have like clashing sword repartee with it and like deflect it with a hoodie or whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so okay, okay, don't care about, I, I, don't I care about the anatomy the... or physics of Razor Fist. You'll enjoy this scene because it's yeah. a really fun bus fight. No, no, yeah. it's a great bu- uh, like scene where they're like fighting and then aquafina's like having to like uh drive the over bus. the bus yeah and it, it's a lot of jackie chan nonsense and i love it it's great now yeah so here is where the movie s- seems to address a thread that i don't think it sets up and it continues to pull on this thread which is uh like um katie says when uh when Sh- uh, shang chi is confronted to to like hey give me your pendant by these random thugs she's like hey you got the wrong guy does he look like he can fight and then you know he is an incredible martial artist and she's like what the fuck who are you and he like runs right, and flips she's over like, the top she's of the known bus. him since he was a kid basically <laughs> yeah but like clearly like it is a secret from her that you know he is this incredible martial artist and it's never shown to us before this but it's also like one it's a marvel movie and two we just watched the whole thing about his dad being this what thousand year warrior so like this is not a surprise to us we also saw how jacked he is when he woke up and uh i don't know i think yeah yeah but like i think uh, it's a missed opportunity to play into this for our sake or lean into her perspective a bit more it just felt a little flat i think like a story that uh katie said earlier when they were with their friends like how they met Mm -hmm. and like she stood up for him i think that was supposed to establish that she's not aware that he's a kung fu master yeah yeah i'm not saying that they didn't establish it i'm saying i i think it came across a little weakly yeah uh like like this this could have been a more interesting thing to explore either like captain marvel did a good job of capturing like the born identity effect of like somebody discovering themselves but you can also do that from the perspective of a secondary character and it's just like it's a character beat that comes up a couple times for her, and I, I don't think has a ton of resonance with us. Like, I'm never, like, think I've, – I've seen this movie twice, and I don't – it never hits me. Oh, man, can you believe how surprised Katie was? Like, there's a world where that could be a plot point. It's just not. And I, I don't know. That that stood out to me. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I at the it. end of the day, it's like, you know, we, we've seen that kind of story a lot. So, like, I don't, I don't blame them necessarily yeah. for skating past that so much. Like – she does act surprised at it. It's just like, you know, she forgives him for lying to her for 10 years a little bit faster than we're used to these kind of interactions yeah. happening. But since it wasn't like really a priority for the movie but also to it's have because that, like he came like, out true. came out with the truth when it like finally yeah. like got out, you know, like she she's like, "Okay, right. okay you got to explain this to me." And he's like, oh, "Okay, fair enough. I will explain Cause everything." Like, Ultimately, I think that like all of this backdrop with like all this is really just explaining a reason to get this fun character that Aquafina is playing in the movie because she doesn't otherwise have a reason to be there, which don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining that she's there because I think she's a great presence in the movie. But I like that's why it's like, you know, it's not really about that. Like they just wanted. Yeah, they just wanted this character to be in the movie and not have them be not have the whole plot of the movie be them fighting about the fact that he lied to her for 10 years because that's just not the story they're trying to write. So that's fair. It did did lead to maybe my favorite line in the movie when she's like storming out of his place. She's like, you uh, he's like, I got to fly to go see my sister because he has this this um, postcard saying like. Uh, I have a sister and she's in trouble. And <laughs> this is also a, a revelation. Like she has a, he has a sister and she's just like, you can explain it on the plane, Sean. And he's like, wait, you're not coming with me. And my favorite take in the entire movie is her walking out of his door, turning around and saying, you can explain it on the plane, Sean. And slamming the door as he walks <laughs> out. I don't know why her take on that fucking killed me both times. I saw which, this movie. uh, which fucking leads into one of my favorite parts of the movie where she is fucking uh, mocking him for his real name being <laughs> Shang-Chi and then him picking the identity of Sean to, to, to disguise himself. And it's just making fun of just like, oh, yeah. That, like, hi. My oh, hi. My name, name is Gina. Is... I need to go undercover. My name is Gina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
it's just it's very funny because like when i saw the trailers right and it was just like him explaining her name his name and the, and she was having a hard time pronouncing shang chi i was just like that seems weird because it's not that hard to really pronounce and now yeah. that all makes sense because yeah. it, it's yeah. in the context of like oh she's you know, she didn't know his name was shang chi yeah. um, right so what was the name of the city where they landed? They flew over, I believe, to mainland China. It had big Madripoor vibes, if you've seen their take on Madripoor in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But um, mm-hmm. I the, don't. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's. I mean, I'm sure it's Madripoor's in but... Indonesia, allegedly. But uh, they, no, it, no, no. Yeah, I know it's not but, in Madripoor in this movie, is what I'm saying. But no, like, it, I, it, I it is. It is mainland China, I believe, because they end yeah. up helicoptering here to another place that we know for sure is in China. Um, yeah. But this this is where we get to see an underground fight club in this skyscraper. Yeah. Um, I also, just, you know, before we breeze, breeze past it, importantly, like, while they're on the plane, he uses this as, like, you know, basically exposition to, oh, right, to right, right, right. further explain all of the, like, you know, like the yeah. myth of his father and his mother and, and stuff like that. And, and yeah, he continues like, to yeah. backfill the Brings flashback we got, or, like, the, the prologue we got. Like, yeah. how, it, how it jumped from the fight to having a kid between the parents. Like, he starts to fill in some of those details. Um, right, and then also, like, you know, gets into like uh why he left basically was because like when he and his sister were kids uh their mother was killed by people who were like seeking revenge on the father basically and um like then that's when his father kind of like you know went from being like oh like a press he went back to being a crime lord basically yeah Shang-Chi, um, and he, like, I, I don't even think we get all those details now a lot of that comes later in the yeah, movie and this is some of the structural no, right. stuff that i want to pick apart as we as we get further into it here yeah. we get we, we do get some of the training stuff and we get told that um shang chi was sent to the united states to kill uh his mother's killer and katie yeah, asked which i do think it? that and he comes says, a little no, bit later but no, that that came right there. He says this right here because Katie oh, no, asked, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, asked sorry. did you do it? And he says he implies that he did not do it. Yeah. And then we cut to the skyscraper in China. Um, so basically, like, you know, he was trained by his father to become this killer or whatever. Yep. And then he was sent out in his first mission to kill this guy. And he says he didn't do it. And he just ran away. And that's when he went to San Francisco and, you know, created this new life and met her as a kid and all of that stuff. So that's why he's hiding from his father is because now, he didn't. In you know, the underground this fight club. This... Which is not underground. It's like way above ground, but. It is extreme. Yes, it is a skyscraper. Okay, this above yeah. ground fight club. <laughs> <laughs> this sure. very far above ground. <laughs> this exceptionally elevated fight club uh, has a lot of small matches going on. I assume that as they're walking past all these individual fights and they're, you know, being told, Shang-Chi, oh, he has to do a fight here. Whatever contrivance. He signed a thing by accident. Mm-hmm. But. I'm assuming there are a ton of Easter eggs in this scene. Did you guys yeah, pick only anything one, out of this I, that I, I missed? I didn't really see the only one really that I noticed anything. is that there was there was an extremist guy. Uh, I, I I did catch that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other ones, yeah. I, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure that there are things, but not things that I caught. Blew over my the head, biggest yeah. that we get, uh, the the biggest cameos we get are the people fighting in the ring are uh, Wong, Wong and some abomination. Other the abomination. I don't think that's yeah. abomination. Uh, they I confirmed it is. is. He looks is. different. He looks closer to he... his comic look, but that is uh, uh, canonically Abomination, the character played by Tim Roth. Uh, I also read somewhere that this is Tim Roth doing this part, but I don't. I'd have to double check that. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's very from the CGI. I mean, regardless, Hulk movie. like I don't even think they call him like. So even if it weren't the same character as the in the first Hulk movie, which you know you're saying that there that he is, and I believe yeah. you, but even if it weren't, I don't even think they ever call him Abomination in the yes, they do. in the Hulk movie. In the first Hulk movie, yeah, uh, the guy who would have been leader if they made a sequel to it. Uh, when Tim Ross character is like trying to get juiced up, like, hey, I want more of it. I want more of that in me. And he's like, we can't do this. Whatever we make will be. An abomination cut. Sure, but that's yeah. a, that's a, a lowercase, uh, you know, an yeah, abomination. Yeah, but that, but that is, the but that is the writers doing that. That is the writer. No, saying I know, that. but it's like it's like in a you know in like the X Men movies how they have Sabretooth and then they have yeah. the guy who's got the same name as Sabretooth, but in the films they're different people. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm not saying that's... they're not based on the same character. I'm just saying well, like you could they... say that they're different if you they... if you wanted to. Yeah, it is strange that he does. He does look more like his comic form 
form in this movie because in yeah. the in the uh, 2008 movie he was like really like gray and spiky, and here he has like the webbed like amphibian ears. style ears, yeah. which is weird. And to say, also like the amphibian horrible, mohawk but... thing. But... Well, I mean, mm. they're like an axolotl sort of, but not yeah. exactly like that, but. Just a very yoked axolotl. <laughs> and the, the yoked axolotl that is Tim Roth. Yeah. Uh, so Shang-Chi <laughs> ends up getting into the ring with uh, the champion of this club, his sister. What? Yep. And, da, uh, da, da. and, you know, they have like a little fight. They have a little fight. He's like, I'm not going to fight you. And she's like beating his ass like, you abandoned me. And he's like, uh, well, he, true, but. Maybe we should end it. <laughs> might be, might be. Yeah, got and as, there. as she's walking away from the fight, we get another backfilling flashback of, of him saying, like, hey, I'll be back in three days. But as we know, thanks to the plane exposition, he did not be back in three days. Uh, and yeah. then she just, uh, she, like, kicks him in the face, and we get a really nice slow-mo, actually the actor Simu Lu falling face first onto what looks like a plexiglass floor and bouncing yeah. <laughs> and rippling really painfully. And uh, yeah, so from there, I mean, they kind of like, you know, they, yeah. they kind of meet up to talk They meet up. We, we learned that like uh, uh, Shang-Chi's uh, sister has been since then been uh, gaslighting, gatekeeping, girl bossing this underground fight ring away from their father. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what and was her name again? Which, Julie? Julie? Uh, no, Xiao no, Ling. Xiao Xiao Ling. Julie you. is the secretary for yep. the Avatar. <laughs> is, from, is from Legend yep. of Korra. But, okay. Um, <laughs> Might be. <laughs> yep, that's right. Also, uh, also I, just in case we didn't, like, mention this explicitly, after that, he after he got, like, fought on the bus, he figured, that since they were coming for the necklace that his mom gave him, that that's, that's why he went to go find his sister, because he figured, oh, they're going for her next. That that is made pretty clear in the plot. Yeah. I don't know if we explicitly mentioned it, so I'm just yeah. why no, he that's went good. here at all. But. But, and, and then and then when he asks her about the postcard, she's like, "I didn't send this." And then yeah. da, 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 the ten and rings then they're both start like, to infiltrate ah, the place, fuck. and it turns out which is oh. probably I think this was probably my favorite fight scene in the movie, and this was like one that we got a little promo of uh, yeah. before the movie came out. So I was I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't like more stuff to this caliber in the movie, but like they have basically a fight on scaffolding outside of the building. Yeah. And there's just like a lot of really fun stuff where like he jumps down and like hits one of the planks so it like, you know, it leverages up, up and hits two of the guys in the face and then there's uses a lot the, of, the scaffolding there's a lot of as jungle gyms. gyms. It's, off of it's different very cool. things. What I loved about this scene is because this is on a skyscraper at night. I'm not going to worry yeah. about the fact that scaffolding is covering literally the entire building, which is insane. Yeah, I was wondering but, that too. It's just like, is that's this building fine. not finished? Uh <laughs> yeah, it's just, is it for style? I don't know. But um, one thing, thing I really liked is, uh, and I uh, this must have been really crazy to like shoot and light uh, the characters yeah. to not make it a post-production nightmare, but it's it's against the reflective windows of the building, and yeah. what lights this is a very massive, you know, like LED screen on a building like yeah. across the block. The reflection yeah. of that is constantly uh, showing up behind them on the building that they're fighting right next to, and I can't imagine how much planning went into that because other than that, there's not a light in this, a lot of light on the characters in this scene. And it's yeah. so slick. Like you almost don't even notice it. The second time I watched yeah. it, I was just trying to trace it in my mind uh, how much work must have gone into like designing that scene before they shot it. Yeah. And again, like as, as true with every fight scene, it's all very clearly shot and you can understand mm -hmm. what is going on, which a lot like, of fluid yeah. movement, and which is like, such a rarity in like Marvel action uh, actions in Marvel movies and just mm -hmm. action movies in general where it's like, yeah, this is so refreshing, man. Uh, I, yep. I I like watching this. I'm invested in a fight because I'm yeah. Instead and, uh, of like uh, waiting for the fight to ha end so I can like the, like the result of the fight is less important than just the experience of just watching the fight. In yeah, because fights movie. fights should be thrilling, and like in the way that John Wick is 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 thrilling to some people because of the fact that they have these like wider shots with unbroken action. The, like mm -hmm. they are pulling from the same sort of like martial art films, like Hong Kong films that this is pulling from. But again, this is 
though this is obviously an American film to a large extent, it does feel less Americanized because it's not leaning into those, you know, born established tropes of the shaky cam of the close up. Yep. We're getting a lot of wide shots. We're getting a lot of clear establishment, uh, which lets us see Katie fucking fall off the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, Shang Chi like, like does like a last minute save, but then like uh, he gets hit. Uh, she falls, and then like uh, Zhu, the sister, uh, saves ja- her. Y- yeah. I was about to Jolly. say Julie, and I'm like, nope, I, I'm nope. so sorry. I poisoned the well. <laughs> okay, can we just so the imagine Shang-Chi falling. going, Julie, do the thing. Julie, and then he's saying, and then Julie. She's <laughs> but can we talk about, like, because the movie did not establish, they established that Zha Ling was, like, leaving them and saying, fuck you, I'm out of here. So she was totally mm-hmm. out of my mind at the moment. And I'm watching Aquafina fall off this this bamboo scaffolding, and I'm just like, I mean, they're going to save her. But by the time she's falling, I'm like, I don't know how they're going to – I know they're going to, but I don't know how they're going to save her, and I'm freaking out right now. Like, that that worked for yeah. me. That That is usually yeah. not set up in a way that's legitimately suspenseful, and it worked here. Yeah, I know. There was, like, there was like a small part of my mind that I was just like, are they going to fucking, like, pull a real fucking big they, move, you know, big brain I knew play they, right they, here they and just straight up kill Aquafina? They, <laughs> they couldn't do those pants in. Not after she just got a compliment from, from Zha Ling. You got to keep yeah. those yeah. pants rolling. But Zha, Li saves her, uh, Zha Ling saves her, and uh, eventually um, the bad guys get the pendant, and uh, Shang-Chi chases them away, gets into a really fucking brutal fight with um i don't know what to call this guy because he's not named he's Death not a dealer important. is is the character that he's is, like teacher, I, I think you're talking I about like i, I know yeah, the, the, teacher. The, guy, the guy with like the, the blue robe and like, the, the mask, traditional yeah, mask. Yeah. i, I just yeah. looked this up he is an incarnation of the character death dealer who is a character okay. from the comics um gotcha. but doesn't really earn th- i'm sure that's how he's credited but is not you know that's not uh <laughs> he doesn't say <laughs> that's not how it's uh I'm it's just going to really call him Mask Guy from now on. Yeah, the yeah. Mask Guy, who we saw in the flashbacks trading Shang-Chi, shows up, steals the, both pendants, and runs away. And, like, it's—you can tell that he's—that that, that Mask Guy is trying to, like, jump out the other side of the building. And it's—it uh, it echoed the scene in Endgame for me when uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye are, like, trying to chase each other off the cliff. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was like Shang Chi trying to drag him back and stop him from getting out. And again, like a very intense fight scene that clearly communicated what was happening. Um, yeah. Until, until the dad shows up. Until the dad yeah. shows up, and he's like, "Son, it's been so long. Howdy." Yeah. Exact. Okay. Did this hit you guys as weird that like we get the club infiltration? Cool. We get all the bad guys with the taser weapons cool and then we get the mask guy and you're like wow they sent the big guns and there's like a helicopter ready to take him out of the building like he's trying to jump out the window so that he can get away (laughs) so you think like oh this is an escape helicopter but everyone else is in the building like three rooms away from them slowly walking over i i I, I have to i I, I have to imagine nobody told mask guy what the deal was and like <laughs> and like the dad's just and the dad's yeah, just like man, this is, on the this right is after this it's like dude no we were in fucking office 28b you didn't have to jump out the window you idiot you keep trying to jump out windows <laughs> why are you obsessed with this <laughs> yeah, nobody's it, asking it's kind of one of those this. cinematic mo- mo- like moments that like they yeah don't really expect you to question it in the moment because it's just like oh you know you're in suspensive fight and then boom it's brought to an end because bad guys here and you're not really meant to think like why the fuck is he there why were they fighting if he was there the whole time yeah so this is where i feel like i i think i can finally say i think that this movie does a very good job of sending up uh the tropes of martial arts movies uh blood opera movies Mm -hmm. kung fu movies and the fact that you're trying to create these like character dramas within the fight scenes and really focus on those fights and then like what they mean to people as soon as they're over it's not just fight for fight's sake it's fight for character's sake um but i think that those are just some conventions that rub me the wrong way and this is an example of it and that's a me problem it's just not a thing I mean, that i'm super yeah, into i mean so like i love well, the no, fight I mean, scene of it... between mask guy and shang chi and then i was like uh. yeah i mean to be fair a lot of b martial arts flicks like where they excel mm. in like uh you know storytelling through the action they kind mm-hmm. of fail in the 
uh, they can often kind of struggle in the uh, beat, <laughs> beat to beat storytelling. Yeah. 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 Um, and then we get a helicopter ride to his base, which is like I was thinking in the beginning that very first scene we see where he is, uh, where uh, Zhu Wang Wu, Zhu, is that right? Uh, Wang, yeah, Wang Wu, Zhu, yeah. Zhu Wang Wu. Uh, when he's, uh, like, it shows him a thousand years ago, I thought that this base would be, like, the base he captured back then. I don't... Yeah. It, was that the case, or was I just trying to fill no, in information no, no. that didn't exist? I think it was a different place. It was yeah. definitely okay. a different like some, place. Some like, temple out in the mountains. Because it's this very, was, yeah, like... This was higher on the mountains, yeah. It's very League of Assassins-y, you know, like, from... <laughs> yeah, from uh, DC. DC, yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, and then we get a dinner scene where his dad fucking lights up Iron Man three for ripping off the Mandarin. Uh, <laughs> that was a which, funny scene. I I love I love that. that. Like, but I also love how like, he's we, like, we're finally they they sorry, needed. Uh, I I love how he was just like yeah. So some American terrorists like took took the Ten Rings name in order to instill fear, but he didn't have my name, so he just went with the Mandarin. And then like, man, why'd you name me after a chicken? And that's yeah. He's like hey, hey, he brought America like, to you his named knees it after because they orange, were afraid yeah. of an orange. <laughs> uh, no, it was Which it was I... a really nice scene that sets up something to come. The direct tie to the fake out of the Mandarin's existence in Iron Man three. Yeah. Which I think is also another instance of the MCU saying like, yeah, we have not, we did not always handle cultural stuff very well. Because Iron Man 3 got a lot of flack for, before we understood what was happening, got a lot of flack for casting Ben Kingsley uh, mm, as yeah. the Mandarin, you know, a British yeah. guy playing yeah. a Chinese guy, which he did win well, an Oscar he, he, for playing he, an Indian man back in the 80s. So just I, I like, mean, okay, wait, no, Ben Kingsley's, Kingsley is half half white, half Indian, so. Okay, okay, that makes yeah. more sense. Um, but um, like also, like, I, I don't know, I, I like this scene too because it, it, it like it set up some kind of character traits of the mandarin just like or not mm -hmm. you know not Zhu it's Wengu. like it's yeah Zhu Wengu, right and just like how he acts because he definitely acts in this like you know he's like a very powerful guy but you can also tell that it's like you know the extent to which he believes some of these legends and things is like pretty dangerous and it's setting that up for like you know the rest of the movie but also just like in the way that you know like he addresses aquafina or whatever right and it asks her like what's your Chinese name? And they're all kind of looking around the table like, uh, we probably shouldn't tell him that she's just straight up an American, right? Because like, <laughs> we don't know what he's going to do about that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just like setting him up is like, I, I like him as a character well, because well, no, I no, feel no. like he's that, pretty that consistent scene, in like... It's not the whole, oh, she doesn't have a Chinese name. It's that it's sort of a cultural, uh, how a lot of Asian people will have like, uh, easy to They'll pronounce. They'll assimilate West, to take American West, names. Yeah, yeah, easy yeah. to pronounce but like, Western uh, name, but then they, you know, have their actual. But what we name do see name. earlier in the movie, which we didn't cover, is uh, we see a scene in her apartment where, like, she's not as in tune with her culture. Like her her grandmother yeah. is is about to burn things and put them on the grave of her, of her husband to send them to the, the afterlife, at, which is a Chinese tradition, and she's like not super in tune with it. She's not dismissive of it. And she's, like, just really into being American. So at this point, I will yeah. say, I was with Jeff. I was like, if she has a Chinese name, does she even know it? And when she yeah, came yeah, out yeah. with one, I was pretty surprised that she just, like, And I wasn't sure if – I wasn't sure how to read that in the movie. Like, I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if she actually had a Chinese name or if she just made something up to appease him. I wasn't really I, – I think that it was genuine. Yeah, but it's it's never it, revisited, it's, so it, I, it, I, yeah. I, I it was. I think the idea is it's – it's an actual name, but she's just not yeah. used to saying it because yeah, mm -hmm. asks yeah, that, that's kind of yeah, the that read. Sense. That's the read I had, more or less. Um, but this is also but, um, where once again we revisit the flashbacks where Zhu Wu starts yeah. to fill in more context about how he retired the rings when he met his wife, and then after she died, he started it all back up it, again. He took he, he yeah. went nuts. Yeah, he went he yeah. went nuts. And yeah, stuff. no, uh, um, and we. Uh, pretty soon after we learn what his primary motivation for the rest of the film is, he's a simp. He he's a super simp. Yep. <laughs> uh, super Which simp, like yeah. usually usually as a supervillain, uh, like motivation really bothers me. For him, I feel like it felt pretty natural because like 
you're kind of following like this dude was alive and doing like warlord shit for like thousands of years years. potentially right a thousand years right and then he finally like met someone who he felt like was his equal right and then you know years later she was taken away from him that feels more natural to me in terms of like this dude has not gotten over it in like 10 years because that's such a small part of his life then like usually that trope is just like oh, the villain's whole revenge is, like, this woman that he fell in love with and knew for, like, a year, and then she died, and then he's, like, became a supervillain because of it, and it's just, like, you know, people yeah. do actually... Yeah, yeah, get but, over like, in this case, I think one, <laughs> it was long enough for him to have two children with, so, like, yeah, yeah. That, that is gonna be a big part of his life. Also, like, fractionally speaking, his peacetime uh, dad time is so much shorter than his warlord time that yeah the moment something yeah. changes yeah. it's gonna fall on ba- old yeah, habits you're gonna yeah. slip back to your old habits yeah, yeah. And, and which I is think why that, like I, usually usually that trope bothers me a lot in this i felt like it felt pretty natural and yeah, it actually especially with sense. especially with some of the twists that come a little bit later regarding yeah. what is fueling this but like yeah at this point i was also uh pretty captured by the fact that like there's a lot of guilt involved because we also have come to find out the reason that she left is her her home of Tao Lo, the mythical Tao Lo that he, you know, was trying to find through that woods earlier. Uh, they were willing to let her back in, but they would not accept him. So she left Tao Lo and the magical forest and everything and all her powers behind to yeah. go live with him. And then she was killed by consequences of his actions. So like, and it was also like the, the fact the guilt that makes like, it more believable until we get yeah. the additional context later. And I thought that that was, and like, it was, was it was nice... also the fact that like because they were making this family together, he gave up his like crime lord ways, right, and yeah. put away the ten rings, and as, and he felt that as a result of him like basically weakening himself to be with his family, that, that allowed, allowed his, his yep. wife to be killed. Whereas yeah. if he, you know, he he says some line later that is just like if I had those ten, if I still had the ten rings on, like no one would have even attempted to do that yep you know yeah. which is like yeah that that makes sense why he went which, straight back to using them afterwards like i and, you know like i don't we'll agree with him to, but i get it you know we'll get to like the uh, extra motivation behind this later but like i found mm-hmm. this reasoning so compelling and yeah. like believable that when we get the additional context later i was i it, it kind of threw me a little bit in not the best way because uh, I don't, I've, like this was so well developed, I would have been content if this was the movie. I knew that it was going to build to something else, but um, yeah. But anyway, they, they he he plugs the pendants into this thing, uh, this dragon face, and a cool ass looking fucking water map that made no sense but was visually spectacular. Um, explains that the moving forest you saw at the beginning of the movie, it you need to be able to understand where the paths are moving. Otherwise, there's one day a year that you can basically take a straight line through, and that is in three days. Yeah. Um, but when uh, Shang-Chi and Katie and uh, Zha Ling decide not to help, he puts them into a little jail oh, cell. by the way, he also explains that, like, he's yep. hearing his wife's... I think they explained it here, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yep, yeah, you're right. He's, she, he's like, she's, she's calling to me. To me. I, I just gotta yeah. go to the village, destroy this dragon gate thing, and we will... This family mm-hmm. will be whole again, and they're like, Mom's dead, Dad. You gotta stop simping for the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's basically like, oh no, there she's being trapped there and she could live again because like she's from, you know, we don't know how this place works. Like she's from this mystical place. Like mm-hmm. death might not be death like we think of it. You know, it's and, kind of and the, then, the And then Shang-Chi being set says, up like, there. Dad, we can't kill this whole village, and then he turns around and goes, Sean! Sean! <laughs> <laughs> So, basically, now that they know that he's trying to do this, they they break out and they find a character that I did not expect to be in this movie. Oh, uh, I did. Ben Kingsley, oh, Ben Kingsley, oh, Trevor Slatter, so yeah. the the fake Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, I had heard a rumor that Ben Kingsley was going to be in this movie. So as soon as I hear the monster growling from in the cave, I was like, Oh, I know where this is going. I know exactly yeah, where I we are no in the idea. movie. <laughs> I I was so stoked. And we we come to find that he tells his story about how he got there. No, honestly, no point in repeating it. It's not important, and he delivers it better than any of us ever could. But yeah, it's he, maybe a little bit far fetched, but I, it is it's not. Yeah, but he's essentially <laughs> Zhu Wang's Wu's court jester. And then yeah. a little tiny faceless fuzzy thing comes out, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is that?" And, and now, he's like, 
wait, you can see it? Morris is real? And he just assumed he was hallucinating the whole time when this little, as Aquafina calls it, a little chicken pig uh, walks out. <laughs> now, I'm wondering, Chowder, you might know more about this than I do. Do you know if that creature is actually based I on don't anything? Know. I actually all don't know. the other creatures that we, we see later a lot about actually don't know. are guardian spirits. Uh, I later. actually don't know what if it's based on anything. I, I, gotcha. I asked one of my I, friends like, who, I recognize who most is... of the other things that we see later, but yeah. that one I was like, I, I, I don't know if this little faceless thing with, with six wings and, you know, it is, is, but is, it's is based on anything. Uh, but anyway, crucially, what Morris the chicken pig can do is navigate them through the forest. So yeah. they do a, uh, a car chase thing in a garage. And Which they is bust wild out. because, like, can I just... I, I don't know, yes. maybe Morris Morris the chicken pig thing uh like did was un like knew that that uh Zhu Wang Wu was was not trustworthy and couldn't be led there or something. Cause like they say that he is the one who found it, right, and brought it there. So yeah. if he had this thing that could just navigate him through the forest the whole fucking time, like did he just not know? Yeah, to I do mean, that? I mean, remember we nobody no, but <laughs> we we get no look into the heart. Yeah, I mean, of remember pig. nobody but uh, ben Kingsley could understand what the chicken pig was saying, so like, so like, yeah, that's yeah, which is also never explained. But, but really, like, ba but, you know, but like, so basically, <laughs> yeah, it would never have cooperated with him, and even if it did, he wouldn't understand what it was saying, and he wasn't aware that his court jester could understand yeah. what it was saying. Yeah, I would have liked maybe a like a line of dialogue being like, you know. He knew that he couldn't bring him back there because he's got the bad mojo or whatever. You I know, guess, but... well, later when they do get back to Tao Lo, um, Morris does seem to be recognized by the people there and also recognize them. So since mm -hmm. the village did say that Zhu Weng Wu well, wasn't allowed, I'm wondering if maybe he just picked up on that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's totally yeah. plausible. I just would have yeah, liked yeah, maybe a, a line explaining part, that. Because yeah. I think when he comes back, they're not like, "Oh, hey, it's our specific little buddy." They're just like, "Oh, you got one of our one of our dudes who's you know one of the creatures that lives here. Welcome back." Yeah. You know, like I, I didn't get the sense that they're like, "Oh, familiar with this guy specifically." Oh, shit, it's like Kyle. they're familiar Kyle's that this, back. he's clearly from there. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Hey, uh, it's Morris. What's up, Morris? Now. <laughs> The, I was wondering name, where you wandered off to. The name Razor Fist is never spoken in the movie, but we do know his name is Razor Fist because he has a car. It's tampoed that, on his car, yeah. That has <laughs> Razor Fist painted onto the side, and the license plate is Razor Fist. <laughs> um, and he does say, that's my car. So he you does, can, you yeah. Know. So that's how we know what Razor Fist's name is. Um, you can which, put, really, the, without that line, you could put those pieces together. I think you, you certainly could. Um, Turns though, out again, the guy in the mask was actually <laughs> Razor Fist, and uh, <laughs> you know it's kind of a Full Metal Alchemist kind of situation where the guy who's made out of Full Metal is not actually the Full Metal Alchemist, but his oh, brother, awkward. who has the one metal arm, is the Full Metal Alchemist. Aha! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, I, yep, Colin, all, you don't need to. Of that you don't show came need back to watch my head. the show to understand what Jeff is talking <laughs> about here. Like, I know, but like, <laughs> I, you, I think you need to have seen a little bit to understand it because, or I don't know, I've only seen a couple episodes of it. Anyway, that's not important. Full Metal Oculus is. I can't even talk. Somebody else say what happens next. They're in a They're car. They're in a car. They uh, break yeah, out. Yeah. So basically, uh, and they, they go over to the yeah bamboo forest labyrinth thing. Uh, Morris uh, guides them through it. Uh, and they eventually make it to the village where all the people are like, y get the fuck out before we start shit. And then like, <laughs> uh, Shang-Chi's. And then Michelle Yo comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Who, oh, yeah. who is his, uh, their mother's sister. So their, their aunt. aunt. And she's like, whoa, 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 yeah. chill everybody. And, and they explain. So. Chowder, I want to ask, have you seen Godzilla vs. Kong? I actually Kong? haven't. I just... Okay, Jeff, you have. I know yeah, for I a have. fact that you have. When they drove through, you know, they drove through the forest, you know, stay in the pocket. There's a whole scene there. It's, you know, f uh, you know, we're not going to make it very fun. They go under a waterfall, and then a watery portal thrusts them into this magical world. I know it didn't oh, yeah. look the same, but did you get yeah. the Hollow Earth vibes from when King Kong was running around in... The Hollow Earth in Godzilla vs. Kong. I wasn't. 
I wasn't like really thinking about that, but I can see why you why you would draw yeah. this connection. It was just like this big sweeping vista with like strange creatures flying around. You see a bunch more yeah. chicken pigs. I was you a see little. The, the it, I thought horse. it was a little bit weird to uh to like go through that whole bamboo thing that is supposed to be like very difficult to capture or to like very difficult to get through. And then they go through a waterfall and then the waterfall just like wormholes them there. Yeah. Like that was a little strange to me. And this, but... <laughs> and this is explicitly called both another universe and another dimension. So yeah. we, beyond that, we don't really get any context as to what Shaolo actually yeah. Yeah. is relative yeah. to Earth. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, we've gotten, like, apart from multiverse stuff, we've gotten, like, you know, like, the dimension that, like, Dormammu's realm or whatever. Like, we've, we've seen other stuff like that that yeah. is not necessarily multiversal, but yeah, different dimension-y before. It's too bad we didn't see Katie drive in saying, Dormammu, have come to Cargan. Because ah. she's in a car. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, shall- I I felt worse and worse about that as so I was saying like, it. Sh- I apologize. Like, so like the people of Shallow <laughs> explained that uh, <laughs> they exist to like keep this gate closed because this gate has like an ultimate evil on the other side, and they need to the the destroyer in darkness is what yeah. they call it. And yeah. how did you guys feel about essentially what was the cave painting exposition here, but with a CG wall of wooden sculptures? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, sculptures I like the were good. Sculpture. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the sculptures no. were gorgeous. My problem is with just the ultimate evil itself. Like, you got this ultimate evil that uh, you got this ultimate evil that's like, oh, we have to create an entire secret village and hide it away in a uh, alternate dimension mm-hmm. where we spend our whole lives protecting it. Wow. And it's like, it's it's. They seem to okay. So Michelle Yeoh's character, and by the, and by the Sorry, end, it's like. Oh, this ultimate evil is pretty killable. There's, we've seen stronger yeah. things. Yeah, I found that a little bit strange too. But also, uh, I'll get into why I'm slightly more okay with that in a bit. Um, but like, also, I think worth mentioning is there is a line of dialogue about how like this one village is not their whole realm yeah. or civilization. Michelle it's Joe... just this specific village in this dimension is is protecting this thing but the rest of the dimension has a world that yeah, like they, they, you know she other specified, people have like, we, we have we have cities bigger yeah. than anything in your universe not just yeah. earth but like your universe and we've seen some nutty cities in like the guardians of the galaxy movies and stuff like that so it's a it's a yeah. big claim so I, from I liked Yeo. that that they're not just like saying like oh like the whole dimension is just this one village filled with you know yeah. like protecting it is like they you know though they didn't show it they did say some stuff that fleshed it out a little bit more and being like yeah like that would be kind of weird i don't know you know um and i'll I'll get into later when we get to the end of the plot like why i'm okay with them killing the big thing um but basically you know they're there and they like have a training montage they give him and his sister the superhero their superhero suits basically um, which is a good way to get them in in superhero costumes we get to see makes sense yeah no i like that we get to see shang chi and his aunt uh, like spar with each other as she sort of teaches him the airbending techniques of this place. Yeah, yeah. And God, Michelle Yeoh is just so good. Okay, with I, I, I should point out it's not actually Star Trek Discovery. And okay, I should point out it's not actually airbending. It's like chi manipulation. Yeah, because I don't no, think yeah. we mentioned uh, they they got chi powers and uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why that's his name. I mean, chi is a very <laughs> No, his name isn't Sean. His name isn't Sean Airbending. It's Sean Chi. I mean, it makes sense. Chi is. I'm pretty sure Chi is supposed to be pronounced Key. Like the 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 energy key is. No, is, Qi yeah. is is Chi. Is she sure? Yep. I don't know. It's it's weird. Like sometimes I'm like, that heard, makes I've like been this corrected like about this in both directions. So Chi or is Chi just a Westernized version of? I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. I thought that chi was the westernized pronunciation of ki. That was my understanding, at least of most recently. But I could How be wrong about that. But yep. I'm gonna, both of those pronunciations out there, just so we've mentioned yeah. the correct one at least once. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, um, we get to see him sort of learn this technique before getting yet another backfill flashback sandwiched in between the flashbacks of earlier showing mm-hmm. how their mom actually died, which was a very not dramatic scene of a couple of guys just walking up and standing in a huddle, basically yeah. saying, we're going to kill you now, send the kids out of the room. 
And then Shang-Chi watches even more guys walk up and stand in the huddle. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then watches her mom get killed. And when uh, Zhu Ying Wu comes back, he's just got like, I don't know, some rucksack on his back. And then he's like, oh, God, look at all these dead people. And one of them is my wife. I'm very sad. And that flashback is, I think, one of the last ones we get finally yeah. get, like stringing together what maybe is 10 or 15 minutes of flashback in the whole movie, but now we finally have all the pieces to understand all the bits of responsibility for getting his mom killed. And then he finally confesses to Katie he did kill his mom's murderer uh, yeah. when he got to the United States, and he's been a murderer this whole time, which was a little – would have hit me a lot harder if we didn't just spend the last 30 minutes of the movie focusing on everyone except Shang-Chi because we got yeah. a lot of <laughs> development on Zhu Wu, Zha Ling, Katie, Chicken Pig, and Trevor. We got a lot of all of them and not a lot of Shang-Chi, and then he dumps this on us, and I'm like, I feel like you could have restructured this a little bit to make this hit harder, but okay. Yeah, because, like, there's this whole element, too, of, like, you know, you know, like, this was, like, a thing that was featured pretty heavily in the trailers, and then Mm -hmm. it's also in this fight with his aunt where she's saying, like, you have to embrace both sides of yourself. You are your mother and your father, you know? Like, you have this origin here, and you also, you know, you are born out of this, like, warlord, essentially. So, like, you Mm -hmm. have to, like, embrace both sides of yourself if you want to actually fucking get good, you know? So, like, I I do feel like that could have been explored a little bit more, um, but to get get through the, the, the rest of the plot, basically... Uh, so his father shows back up and, you know, we kind of learned that the, the evil force behind the wall that is trying to get out is like basically the one that is sending him the messages of his wife. And he thinks that she's trapped behind there and he's kind of being manipulated essentially into opening the gate to let out this. Because his 10 evil, wings are actually right? powerful enough um, to destroy so, the gate. The, yeah. Right. Because the 10 rings are like, they're not from here. And we're not still not sure let's, where they're let's from. Let's address that they, later, they though. They get into in, in one yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, yeah. a big yeah. fight breaks out between the village and, like, the Ten Rings. Uh, Shang-Chi and uh, uh, Shang-Chi and Zhu Wu, who uh, have their own, like, one-on-one fight that, like, dra- drags out and, like, he... Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta I gotta ask talk about this fight though because like for all my complaints about the the fucking you know lack of focus the structure of the flashbacks like leading to some like of like these flat moments and confessions I think that 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 uh, Shang Chi and his dad yelling at each other in the fight and him saying like you just watched your mother die and he's like yeah. well we needed you after like this stuff yeah. hit hard yeah that worked and like all the work that they did that felt flat before came up in this moment which is why i feel like all these criticisms i have are just me problems because this fight does what a good kung fu movie is supposed to do which is really like a fight is just explosions of emotion between two characters and that yeah is that being said i feel here. like the fight itself was a little underwhelming compared to previous yes. ones and yeah. like I, I think that there could have been more interesting things done with the them kind of wrestling over using the Ten Rings because he's kind of getting control over them. Like, because yep. it, it, it's like, it kind of, with the Ten Rings, like, floating around and doing magic shit, it takes it out of this sort of, like, real yes. martial yep. arts moment and I adds agree. a bunch of CGI flying around. Which so it's is... like, I wish that they had, you know, obviously they're going to use the Ten Rings with the CGI, but I wish they had at least choreographed it in a way that made it felt feel more grounded yeah. and, like, made I've... have that narrative in the fight like some of the previous fights in the movie. But, you know. I think that's, that's... one of the magic tricks of the movie, though, is, like, as soon as we yeah. enter Tao Lo through the water portal... Like, that's like the, if we're talking a five act structure, that's somewhere around like the, you know, the, the fourth act mark. So we've got like two fifths of the movie suddenly in this alternate dimension Chinese village yeah. with fucking dragon scale weapons, soul eaters flying around and, and these crazy 10 ring fights. Like it shifts from martial arts movie into straight fantasy without yeah. really feeling like you went right. through that transition. And I I gotta respect. Yeah, the no, fact I that think they, they so I think well. they pulled like, it out pretty well. That it's fantasy until the dragon yeah, bursts so out. So anyways, the water. so his dad like manages yeah. to knock out Shang Chi, and he starts like beating down the portal and like releasing like these things called soul eaters that like take souls and bring it to the devourer of darkness. The, the, the ultimate darkness, yeah. The 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 mega soul sucker. The mega soul sucker. Later. 
or <laughs> to like feed on and like uh you know the ten ring mooks and the village uh look at each other like oh oh god that's that's uh maybe we <laughs> I liked that scene when the when one of them just comes in and just like kills the mascot and then Razor Fist is like yeah all right we'll fucking help you guys yeah they ki- they kill mascot <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then the, the, uh, I mean, there's a lot of nuance in here, but there's, there are some fun visuals of Shang-Chi, like, getting some of the rings from his dad. When his dad yeah. has the rings, they're blue, and when Shang-Chi or his mother has them, Wait, no, they're I think yellow. That's the, isn't that a so yellow the way around? Shang-Chi, no, it's yellow no. when he has it, because yeah, it's oh, definitely okay. orange when, when you them. have played as much Sonic the Hedgehog as I have, nothing stands out like a man walking out of a smoke cloud with ten glowing rings floating around him. That is an <laughs> unmistakable image. Um, and the mega soul and also, sucker. Also, you know, they're mm-hmm. they're analogous colors to his costume, yep. whereas blue would have been, you know, more on the other okay, side of the enough. spectrum. Uh, yeah, his dad is the blue. One. Even the color of yeah. like the taser weapons that you got in the skyscraper earlier in the movie, like We're blue, it's all right. blacks and I, blues I remember. for the I bad guys. Also, like and a lot when of the uh, when the ten rings mooks are like running in to fight the village, it feels like every single one of them has like a bit of a blue wash over them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's they it's very coded tones. so that like blue bad red yeah. good is kind yeah. of the, yeah. the the aesthetic. Yeah, so but the mega soul sucker busts out and tries to suck the soul out of the fucking other dragon that came out of the water, the guardian. Well, the that, gar- uh, yeah, it's like their deity that that their mom was talking about in the yeah, beginning so, of the movie. That's a yeah. pretty dragon, guys. Yeah, so the mega yeah, yeah so the mega soul sucker comes out. Uh, guardian dragon comes out. The mega soul sucker like grabs uh, the dad and like he looks to his son and he's like. Well, son, I guess I can't mansplain, man whore, manipulate my way out of this one. <laughs> He's like, oh shit, this is not my wife. This is a giant scary murder dragon. <laughs> He's like, okay, you can so, have these so, rings now. Yeah, so I did a bad his, job. Uh, gives Shang-Chi the ten rings and gets his soul sucked out. And yeah, that that's yeah. the end of his story. The rest of the fight is essentially just a fun struggle where at like, you know, Katie shoots the soul sucker in the neck. And Zha Ling, like, does a really good job of of protecting the Guardian. And then Shang-Chi ends up shooting the rings into the mouth of the Soul Sucker. And we get an amazing-looking yeah. shot of the light of the Ten Rings shooting out of his yeah. chest, spotlighting him from underneath as he falls yeah. through the rain, uh, or the, the, the mist. And then a key, the goriest explosion they could have gone with as he pulls yeah. the rings out of the soul sucker and you see all yeah. the bloody appendages L- like like the shot off which, across um, the screen to, to get into this now uh, yeah. like the this is the reason I'm okay with them just killing this thing because we have established in this movie that a the 10 rings are super powerful b no one really knows where they came from or what their deal is, mm-hmm. right? So this is not something from their society that they knew could have been a solution to this problem a while ago. It's like, yeah. you know, so I can I can justify that. I agree with you on principle, Chowder, that it's just like, uh, I don't like that yeah. trope where they're just like, we've been defending this thing for thousands and thousands of years, and then some guy just shows up and murders it. But, like, I, I think that the Ten Rings are at... Are at at least yeah, a kind of they... minimum bare explanation for why this was even possible. Actually, no, that's a little um, smarter than I even thought about before. Yeah, because like yeah. part of the reason they wanted Ju Wen Mu out of there was not just the fact that he's crazy pants, but also that that he was powerful ten, they, enough to open the door. Yeah, yeah, they were they were trying to keep anything as powerful as the Ten Rings away from them, and because of how it could be used to free it, so they would inevitably try to keep them away, despite the fact that they could also kill it. So it's like a yeah, double-edged sword. which you would have no way of really knowing beforehand. Yeah. And there could have been more time spent on that idea, being like, oh shit, we didn't realize that yeah. this was possible. But, you know, like, I think you, that you can headcanon that explanation as making sense. But, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, yeah. it's a little strange, mm-hmm. but, like, I, I think it works relatively well. Yeah, no, it's like um, a pet peeve of mine where it's like... But yeah, that's that's pretty we, much the plot of the movie, we, is that, are, you know, they, they go back yeah. to San Francisco... And they're kind of he's kind of like outed as a superhero now, and then in like the last scene in the movie, Wong is like, "Yo, can we fucking talk?" Uh, and brings him to the the yeah. uh, and, you know and like the, uh, which brings us to called, like the, the mid credit scene where it's like uh, where Wong, Bruce Banner, and Captain Marvel are just like 
sitting around. Mm-hmm. They're all, all FaceTiming, the like aka uh, whichever of a- whichever actors were willing to do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're all just like because we're sitting there, and I'm just like, I mean, I get they couldn't get Benedict Cumberbatch, but it is a little obvious, and well, also like they clearly just got Mark Ruffalo because he was down for it, and also he's not the whole. Yeah, no, that Mark. was weird. Uh, yeah. But no, Wong makes sense because we saw him earlier. Make it, it makes sense. It's fine. Yeah, sure. that 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 seemed yeah, very and, deliberate. No, Wong being there makes sense. It feels a little weird for Wong to be there Captain without Marvel Stephen and, Strange. And Bruce, yeah. Hold on. I, I like to imagine that like this scene was happening during during uh Spider Man uh No Way Home and like yeah, I think that like, is going to be like the when case. Wong yeah. w- told uh Doctor Strange do not do multiverse shenanigans and walks off, it's to like go get Shang Chi and Katie. Uh he he does that, has See, I assumed it was to go to fight the abomination yeah, himself. Uh, he, but. he does so, that. Has, so, well, ha- a couple of things. I, I like how ha- this has that conversation with Shang Chi. Comes back it's like, what the fuck, Strange? So, <laughs> as much as I enjoy that headcanon that this all takes place during the upcoming Spider-Man movie, uh, Wong does specific uh, in the Spider-Man trailer. He has bags and is like going on a vacation to like a cold or, or to, to like another place. And then in this, when he at the end of the film, they're talking to their. Also, I love the moment when he, like, sling ring portals his way into the Chinese restaurant. And then he's like, is there a Shang-Chi here? Shang-Chi? <laughs> like, he's calling out a pickup order. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, here. Yeah. And then they go through and they talk to him. He says that they felt the Ten Ring energy in Kamertage. So he was specifically, like, not in the Sanctum Sanctorum, but in the place in Doctor Strange where, um, uh, where Stephen Strange trained under the Ancient One. So yeah. I I don't I don't think that's what oh, it is as man. much as I would love that to be that. But I do I do love how this movie fleshes out Wong's personal life. He fucking goes to fucking fight clubs for fun to beat the shit out of what? his friends, the he, monsters. He, he participates he le- in yeah, like I mean, staged I, fights. The sense I got from that was that he was like rehabilitating uh or in like training abomination to be like, you know, uh, you know, like yeah, but it's... then also as soon as Ca- Captain Marvel and uh, Bruce Banner get off the FaceTime, uh, he goes and gets drunk and sings Hotel California with them. Oh, yeah, karaoke. that was very good. Like, <laughs> like, I really like that this is not just Wong as a sidekick who doesn't know who Beyonce is. I also love the thread that in 2016 he didn't know who Beyonce was, and now he knows all the words to songs like Hotel California. Yeah. So he's done a lot of growth in the last well, few it's just It's just the kind of thing where it's just like I, I do feel like – there is an element to which the MCU is like painted by which actors are willing to do things. And like, yes, Mark Ruffalo and Benedict Wong seem very chill to just like show up in whatever the fuck. Right. Yeah. So as a result of that, they show up in a lot of things. Right. Which is like, yep. you know, it kind of, it, it's evolved this character from, you know, just like the guy who's supposed to be the librarian in Dr. Strange yep. to being like, the number two person in, yeah. in the whole sorcerer yeah. organization, right? Yeah, super Under loving. Stephen Strange. Which is great, because so I love Wong. So that's basically he's, the he's whole movie. They go to Talo and... They... Yeah, he's great. So, uh, Jeff, you said you had oh, some stuff wait, in the comics. So at wait, this point, we, we haven't even explained the, 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 what they yeah. said oh, in, the time, uh, in, in the face Super post-credits. In the face... Yeah, in, oh, in the right. face time, like, uh, Wong, Captain Marvel, and uh, Bruce Banner are like, what is this thing like when did your dad get it a thousand years ago uh yeah it's way older than that uh and we don't know what it is but it's sending out a signal it's It's sending sending a a signal signal. and that makes us nervous so i i thought that this was going to be related to you know kang stuff just because i don't know anything about the comics one of my friends uh that knows a lot about the comics said specifically that and i assumed fin fang fin fang foom was going to be part of this movie i thought he was going to be the destroyer in darkness he is not uh, i also thought he was se- going to be the yeah this seems to be this. pointing to fin fang foom as another impending big bad coming down the road so we've got like a few big villains like we've got hints which about which is wild because if you look in the background of iron man one uh there's mm-hmm. a poster on a billboard that it, that has a movie for fin fang foom with the dragon's face on it so That's canonically he's already fictional in this universe somewhat <laughs> which i mean if so... this is an ancient creature i guess that would make sense uh but even in iron sure. man 3 the tattoos on aldrich killian uh, when he's breathing fire from the extremist powers, uh, given its connection to the Mandarin, was supposed okay, to explicitly sure. be a Fine. Fin Fang Foom reference. So, like, they're... sure, but that's just a dragon. You know, this actually had the words Fin Fang Foom. On it. Yeah, I'm just saying it was. It's it's a thing that happened. Um, yeah, I know. 
I'm just saying it's a little bit ballsy of Marvel to claim that every dragon that shows up is a Fin Fang Foom reference. <laughs> Uh, no, but I yeah, think that's just no, one of I them, mean, is the dragon I mean, tattoo. with how much they've changed things up, it can be any number of just the galactic uh, god creatures in Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. It, could, it could just as easily be, like, uh, <sighs> galactic. Right. So, the, uh, the, the post-post credits is, um, or early in the movie, Zha Ling had a message saying, like, yeah, I taught myself how to fight because if my dad's yeah. not going to let me be part of his empire, I'm going to build my own. And Katie says, hell yeah. And this post credits is the hell yeah when we find out that Xia Ling is taking over the Ten Rings and doing her own shit with it. Which, which I hope is going to be a good thing. And not uh, no, oh way. no, she, I, I 100% think she's going to be a villain. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. think it, and I'm so <laughs> excited for it because she's such a fun character. Can we can we talk about her character a little bit before I get into the whole like Mandarin comic stuff and things like that? Because I mean, like... Yeah. The thing that was kind of strange to me about her existence in this movie is that I don't think that the 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 writing of the movie does a good a jo- good enough job at explaining why Shang Chi is the main character in this movie because a like fucking we, agreed. We, we get the setup where it's just like, oh yeah, you and your sister have all this crazy power, and there's this whole thing where it's like, oh, your father would only train you because he's sexist, and you trained yourself, right? Or and and your sister trained herself, right? And then they, you know, they get the matching costumes when they go to the village. Basically, she has the same destiny as he does, but he's the main character, and she's also yes. maybe a better fighter. On question mark, unsure. So you know, like, I'm gonna pull this back. I'm so glad you brought this up because I'm gonna pull this back to my complaint about the bus at the beginning of the movie, where it's like they didn't seem to pick a lane on how they were revealing the secrets of his life. Like it, yeah. they seemed sort of skated past and contrived. Is because I, if we're talking about main characters of this movie, if you ignore the fact that Shang Chi is what it says on the tin, yeah. <laughs> and on all the posters, I think Katie is like the actual protagonist of this fucking movie. I think Zha Ling is a much more impressive character in a lot of ways in terms yeah. of sheer ability. And this is not a failing of any of the performers, but I don't think the script is focused enough. Yeah. On Shang Chi yeah, as a no, character, no, I definitely I, I agree to, with that. to quell this argument, I, 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 I think it should have gone a little more closely in any other direction, or make yeah. it clear that there are multiple yeah. protagonists. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because it's it's one of those things where it's like it it sort of shoots itself in the foot, where it's like basically the reason that they're doing this is to have like inclusion and have these impressive and strong female characters, right? But when they aren't given any like writing reason for you know for for being the secondary characters in this yeah. movie it kind of ultimately comes off as like okay we've made these characters so strong that why is this movie about shang chi and ultimately coming off a little bit like less inclusive because of that because then uh, we've yeah. taken these female characters and included them but we're still focusing on the male one for no i mean, I mean he does reason. have his yeah. other fair, you know, like, it's in, not in, like shang chi doesn't have his own mm-hmm. personal arc and story to be told it's just that like <sighs> oh sure yeah. yeah it 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 feels weak at points when other ones yeah. feel so strong which is yeah. like it just I, in a weird way it's kind of a good problem to have because like in the face of issues yeah. with representation we're now getting to a point where the problem is not that they're not being represented it's that they're represented so well that we get to not focus on that and instead focus on the script yeah. of the film like that's a good problem to have compared to the one I guess had so but like it 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 feels almost like a um you know like marvel saying like hey look we're giving you these fun female characters in lieu of actually just making more movies yeah, about female work. characters you know what i mean whereas like yeah. it feels like it's like that's, it's, yeah, it's an excuse to have the too. representation without actually following through on it because yeah. like but in in regards to this movie i feel like they could have at least like you know had some reason why like shang chi had to be like the quote-unquote like chosen one or whatever like he had some stronger connection or like Maybe the fact that he ran away and, and like, you know, lived in San Francisco changed him in a way that didn't change his sister because, you yeah, know, but, and that's, but, and that's but they made that story saw... like, oh, she ran away also. And she also did more impressive things because she wasn't taught yeah. to do it. She taught herself to do it. And it's just like, and OK, we, like we didn't yeah, we didn't get a lot of talk it, but... about how Shang-Chi's time after killing someone for avenging his mom actually changed him. Yeah, it no, it's heavily. Yeah. Uh, but we don't actually. But that journey seems to take place completely in the fight scene with Michelle Yeoh yeah. when they're practicing uh, uh, also, air bending. Uh, yeah. Also, w- one more thing. It's just like so. Com- 
So Shang-Chi definitely got the better inheritance of, of the two siblings. Like she got, she got the evil, yeah. she got the evil <laughs> secret shadow organization that at this point, there's like a million of them. I'm sure you could just kill a random person and you could just be like, don't worry, evil she- secret shadow organization. And you'd be right. But, but so it's not that special. While Sha- while while Shang-Chi got fucking immortality. Remember, ten, ten rings. Well, he's immortal. There's a good chance. There's a good chance that the Avengers are going to repo the ten rings from him, and they're going to go into a vault somewhere in Comertage, and he's yeah. never going to see him again. Very distinct possibility at this. Point. I, I just be like, fuck also, you. Speaking of yeah, him being I'll a fucking superhero, can I talk about in the final fight? Like, uh, not just in the final fight, but all throughout the movie, I was a little bit like unsure like how much superhuman ability him and his sister had because like in the most in the the majority of the movie are like okay they're just good at martial arts right whereas you could easily say like oh they've inherited some innate magical shit from their father who spent so much time with the ten rings or their mother who came from this this mystical place right because in the final fight they are getting tossed a fucking round by those dragons like crazy and i'm like if they were normal human beings with normal human bodies i don't give a fuck how good they are at martial arts they would not Ligament, be able to yeah, survive ligaments a lot have of a limited shit. tensile strength <laughs> right and it's just like at that point at that point shang chi has the 10 rings right so i'm like okay you can say whatever you want about him because they haven't made it explicitly clear exactly what specific abilities the 10 rings give him right but his sister is still as far as we've been told a human being who is very good at martial arts and she is running on the back of this flying dragon like no she's fucking not you know <laughs> like it is hand wavy in the way a lot of things in this movie are hand wavy again i think in yeah. service of achieving a specific kind of tone of this is not just a martial arts movie this is not just a blood opera character drama this is a fantasy movie and I yeah. think that all the hand waves that we've picked up this whole time, if you're willing to to wave your hand at them and wave them by, um, then I think it's fine. But yeah, no, there's yeah. a lot of stuff like that that you could certainly nitpick, and I think both are like really valid ways to approach this movie. Yeah, um, um, we've been running long, Jeff. What's the comic stuff you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm that's what I was about, about to say. This. Is that we we have to move into this. So let's talk about the character of uh, Wu uh, Zhu Wen Wu, aka the Mandarin. Um, because he is pretty much an amalgamation of two characters in the comics. The the Mandarin, right? The one you'd be familiar with. And I you know, I like that they didn't call him the Mandarin because like at the end the of the day, the Mandarin is kind of a the, y- the is name a, the Mandarin the, is just kind the of char- racist. The character right? himself is just <laughs> so a racist yellow peril. But uh you caricature yeah and yeah. uh colin you you fucking think that the mandarin is a racist character wait till you hear about the fucking other character that he is amalgamation of in the comic the real father of shang chi in the comics who is a uh, fu manchu what not oh, yeah. uh, a character that is like fu manchu literally fu manchu. just is fu manchu oh. <laughs> which is just you know it's been a a racist you know uh orient or like orientalist like yeah it's like this you know character the trope that has been that used has been in become, a lot of things yeah and Ugh. you know because wow. of when the comics were written and how some of that stuff wasn't like in you know public consciousness like they could get away it was like he was a character in the marvel universe was fu manchu and it was a smart decision, I think, to to not use Fu Manchu for yeah. this movie as Shang Chi's father, because like you don't even want to pull that character into it. So it makes sense that they amalgamated um, the two characters because, like, I'm fairly certain in the comics there's no like immortal thing with the Mandarin. Like, I mean, maybe the Ten Ring, but he's not like old. He's not very, very old, right? Whereas that's more of a, a a Fu Manchu thing from at least Marvel's Fu Manchu. So they've kind of amalgamated Oof. these two both racist characters to basically come up with this new character because like yeah. Zhu Wen Wu is not the it, like the fictional alias of any of the previous versions of the Mandarin. It's not like an alias of the Fu Manchu character. It's just a new name, and this guy is for all intents and purposes essentially a new character that is making something different out of these yeah. two characters that are both kind yeah, of racist no, I, I com- stereotypes. Uh, 
I, com- I compare it to like how in uh, Black Panther we had the character of Mbaku, who is yep. in the comics, yeah, man ape, uh, uh, a, a, a man, man, a man, uh, man yeah. who yeah. dresses up in a gorilla onesie, which you know, black people being depicted as gorillas <laughs> is not good for many historical. Re- it's yeah. also something that it's also something that artificial intelligences do all the fucking time. Google, Ugh. fix your shit. <laughs> it just happened again That's recently, so and it's it's fucking uh, uh, absolutely absurd that people don't take machine bias seriously. But but I think yeah. uh, no, this is actually kind of interesting to point out though, with uh, with Mbaku being handled particularly well. Uh, also, looking at the the the, I think this is the th- um, third times the charm in terms of trying to handle yeah. problematic uh, Asian stereotypes in the comics, yeah. adapting them to the film. Because <laughs> strike one was the Mandarin in right. Iron Man 3, which they tried to skirt around by saying, oh, we're not actually doing the Mandarin. It's just, sorry, it's just a joke. It's just, yeah. it's, I'm Trevor Slattery, hello. Um, which is then, like, I ultimately I think is is better than the next example that you're about to talk about, because at least two, they're not Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yeah, yep, yeah. um, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they were like, okay, we also want to avoid this, but we can't do the same thing twice. So instead of casting an Asian person at all, we will have an Asian man in the movie to fake you out for five seconds, but it's actually a white woman uh, who is Celtic, and that's all anyone knows about her. Which is like, no shame to Tilda Swinton and her performance in particular, but uh, I think that was deservedly a pretty fairly scrutinized decision, and maybe not the first one to handle it. Because and and instead because it doesn't try to address the problem, it tries to ignore it. And compared yeah. to the Trevor Slattery one, where the the ignorance actually like played a part in the plot, and it was you could argue it's, that it's you know, making up the it's kind of fear making around the Mandarin is part of the point. Yeah, yeah. In this, in Doctor which Strange, I it was just like, straight up like we're just not even going to touch it, and we're just going to whitewash it. Which like, like, is the thing one in Iron Man three, right? Another one. The thing in Iron Man three, right? Like. I can understand the backlash that people would have about casting Ben Kingsley as the Mandarin before knowing the plot of the movie, yes, right? And that's where most. And of I can the, understand the, the, the backlash that from. people would have about the fake out based on you know like yes, essentially like misleading audiences and and like taking this character that you were excited to see and not doing him. Yep. But I think the actual like both of those things combined, like I I think is a, a little bit better because they're basically like at that point like. It was maybe not the absolute best solution to the problem, but they were basically like the they were saying like, "Hey, yeah. look, you know, we want to reference the Mandarin as a character, but the Mandarin is kind of a problematic character, yeah, so yeah, we're not like, doing him." The yeah. villain that they replaced him with was ultimately uninteresting, so there's like other problems with that. But, but like, but like in terms of representation of Asian yeah. stereotypes, this is the third times the charm because yeah. they finally just said, "Fuck it, let's let's do what this what this should have been the whole yeah, time." Yeah, no, it was like being respectful. I, I, Let's, right. yeah, let's no, actually long, correct long, it. Yeah, a long time ago, like, it. yeah, no, definitely. A yeah, long time great. ago, like, we did a uh, episode on Black Panther, and it's like, uh, uh, there's something we learned yeah. by how they handled Mbaku. Uh, you and me, we had a conversation when, uh, or Jeff, I'm referring to you. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, re- I remember yeah, yeah, exactly the, what you're about to say. The conversation <laughs> we had, we had a conversation where it's like, uh, I was complaining about Tilda mm-hmm. Swinton being cast, and you were like, e- yeah, true, but the original yeah. character is a racist caricature. And at the time, I couldn't uh, articulate that. Uh, I quite articulate yeah. just going, eh, there had to be a better way. And, like, I, I think Black Panther yeah. helps helped because now you could, like, look to something and be like, do what they do, and that's probably the difference. Right. It's just like you you can still use the character, but like remove the elements of it that are just like racist stereotypes. Like I think, like what you said in that episode, like you could literally just like do make the exact same character as Tilda Swinton's character, but just cast an Asian person instead and give her all yeah. the same lines, right? Yeah, and and I mean, I I think what I enjoy about Zhu Wu in this movie is that they go one further when he says the line about like they named me after a chicken dish. They're afraid of an orange. It's like yeah. it is uh, like Mandarin is literally not just the name of a chicken dish and an orange. It's also just the name of the Chinese language. So like yeah. naming a villain after, after a Mandarin, language, yeah, yeah, it's yeah exactly. Just, like, bad. It's like yeah, calling it, him the Chinese, or, or, or just <laughs> or like just having in a having a British character be like. I'm the English. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, yeah. <laughs> and 
I, I think that where this movie succeeds in that regard is um, they they don't just take the time to correct it. They also do take that moment to sort of condemn the original mistake. And like yeah. I'm sure that that won't fit into every script naturally based on the context or the circumstances, but it, um, I think that I think that's a part of the success of this approach compared to the other and attempts. I, you know, I also liked him as a character too, like in ways that he was similar yeah. to Mbaku too. Whereas like they did, you know, they removed all the elements of his character that were just like blatantly racist stereotypes and like the way that he acts or whatever. But they didn't go so far as to remove all of the culture out of him either. Yeah, you know, like he was clearly like. He clearly like valued he was like a fundamentalist from China a and stuff way, yeah. like just as Mbaku did, right? Like Mbaku had like cultural customs and stuff like that. He wasn't just like, you know, basically an American person that was skinned as this, you know, African character just so they could say like, here's yeah. the representation without him being racist. Like I they still feeling... gave them elements of the culture that that tied in an interesting way to the characters that weren't just yeah. like, you know, I have a feeling like that the Ryan typical Cooper ways made, that Americans think right about decision. Chinese traditions you know <laughs> ryan coogler definitely made the right decision in black panther uh to walk yeah. back the casting of tilda swinton as in Baku. <laughs> really glad they didn't go in that direction oh, <laughs> is it ratings, ratings time? time i think it's ratings time <laughs> yeah i think it's ratings time All right. Thank you both for uh, for a very good discussion. Maybe a little bit long, but you know, there's a lot of stuff to, to fucking pick apart in this movie. Yeah, and still it's not a, all of it that I would have liked to only, talk about. But it's only like two hours, twelve minutes, including the credits, and like it's a yeah. dense boy. It's why I can forgive the hand waviness because I'm like I I feel like I just went through so many yeah, events. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot in this movie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, now we are uh, making our way to the ratings section. And uh, all of us are, are going to rate the topic on a scale from ranks. one to ten. We gotta, we gotta do ranks. My, oh, we no, gotta do ranks. My wow. first instinct Holy was more. Yeah, rings. it's right there. Oh my god. Oh, that's god. a good point. Yeah, we're gonna damn have to do it. ten rings. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> damn it! Thank damn you, Chowder, for for keeping Colin and I grounded. Where we're just like, of course, the fucking hardly relevant flying faceless. Fairy, furry pig boy of course <laughs> from shang chi and the legend of the ten rigs that's the only boy. thing we could possibly rate it if i had you uh we're gonna fucking yeah we're gonna rate this movie on a scale from one to ten rings uh Fuck. which of you would like to start go for it um i guess keeping the order uh yeah, so I think I've I've pointed out some of my problems with the structure of this movie. I and I I also acknowledge that a lot of my problems with that structure are based in the genres of movie this is trying to reference, um, mm -hmm. and just being things that I don't enjoy as tropes. Like I both times I watched the movie, the flashbacks torpedoed the pacing for me every single time, and it, yeah, it's one that. of the. It's, it's also one of those things where each time we got a flashback, we got a new bit of character context where I'm like, okay, I kind of feel like you're cheating by just not telling me something. And then, oh, as soon as it's relevant, you're going to tell me this little piece of backstory. Yeah, there, yeah, there's yeah. like 15 minutes of flashback. Put it all into a single, single sequence at the front of the movie. Give me the interest. Uh, give me all the information up front. It removes a lot of my problems with pacing around Chong Chi's development, around the weird non-sticking landings of all the secrets about him as Katie comes to understand them. Uh, I'd like it would allow us to gel with her more instead of being like, wait, was that a secret? Because like it's so nonchalant in the way it introduces them. But again, I understand that that is what this movie is trying to do. That wasn't necessarily yeah. a mistake. That was a choice. But it's a choice that hurts it for me because... I like the rest of it. I love the cast. I love the fight choreography. I love how it switches to big fantasy, and I love the aesthetics. In the same way, I really love the final fight of Doctor Strange for not being a fight, but instead being an argument with good graphics. Like, yeah. that's, that's that was a crazy <laughs> thing to do. And this is similar. This is a final fight against a big monster, but it is so fluid and rhythmic and musical in the way that the intro fight between uh, Zhu Wenwu and, uh, and his wife was where it's just you're captivated by the moment and again the visuals of shang chi fighting uh the mega soul sucker are fantastic so i have a lot of problems with how this movie is built but it still hits me in all the points it's supposed to hit me so yeah. i'm in the kind of this weird limbo where i can't really make up my mind on it uh i'm i'm gonna go with seven rings i think this is a seven ring movie because you should see it it's good 
uh, and its flaws don't break it. it. It is greater than the sum of its parts in a lot of very good ways. I love the cast. I love so much about it. Um, but it's just it sticks in my craw in a way that is is that I'm still trying to wrap uh, my head around. Yeah, no, I'm gonna right. give this seven Shatter. rings out of ten as well. So I didn't. Uh, I I also feel you on the pacing issues. I think this movie has some pacing issues. I didn't feel it as hard. Maybe it's because I'm more used to martial arts films and like I and mm -hmm. like I'm sort of yeah. used to the. And I, yeah, and I, I bristle and I'm against sort of that. Used to, so yeah, it, and I sort of, I'm me. sort of used to like just how they're structured and that like they they don't uh, mm -hmm. they sometimes how often they struggle with like the beat to beat storytelling, but like excel at like the sort of subtextual metaphorical stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and another thing I really liked is just like uh, how they portrayed uh, the dad, because like you know it it would have been very easy for him to be sort of. Uh, sort of unempathetic to him, but like you get the sense that like there's genuine love between him and his children. He's just uh, emotionally stunted jack wagon, uh, and and that's yeah. true. Of, like <laughs> emotionally stunted jack wagon, that and that's true. Of, like uh, uh, like the relationship between Shang Chi and his sister, between uh, Katie and Shang Chi, it, like all the characters really. Work all the action uh, dub does double duty on like being one amazing to look at. This is easily the best uh, ac action in any of the MCU movies. Uh, if nothing else, it's top tier. Uh, and also, the action tells the story. It's not just the plot stops for thrill. And and I think I think it would be, it's it's important to distinguish. This isn't the action tells the story in the way that like you get five seconds of fighting and then a Spider-Man quip and then another five seconds of fighting. Like the action is actually like playing out the emotions yeah. and the narratives in a way yeah. that even the best Marvel yeah. fights. Yeah, uh, my ult my bigger problems is one just like uh, it's not so much a sin of this film, but like the sin of the grander Marvel universe where it's like man, you used. Uh, used a secret evil organization again like this is the movie where i really noticed it uh and yep. also i yep yeah As, especially yeah, exactly. since like this is black, the next yeah. movie after black, after widow, black widow, which widow and and the next movie we're getting is the eternals about a bunch of secret superheroes that have been controlling us the whole time yeah sure <laughs> and uh the other problem is like how the ultimate evil it d just doesn't seem that interesting in comparison to the drama between yeah. Shang-Chi yeah. and his dad and the Ten Rings. Uh, like, that ultimate evil was there just to have world-ending stakes for the sake of world-ending stakes. But, like, it just didn't. Yeah, I was kind of personally, like, when they got into that, I was hoping, like, I know movies never do this, but I was hoping that, like that the end of that would actually be like he doesn't break through the door you know what i mean because yeah. then they can set up the world ending stakes and then not have it be a thing where you have to fight the world ending stakes after the thing goes wrong you know like if it's really that bad for it to get out maybe it shouldn't get out yeah you know? exactly <laughs> and like but and like you know if the movie kept its scale down and focused on more just the drama of like, this interpersonal drama i yeah. think it would have been stronger yeah. but you know overall fucking love this movie it's fantastic i love it seven out of ten rings yeah and you know i i think i'm landing pretty much in that exact same camp for for uh some similar reasons and some other one and some different ones uh, like ultimately, you know, I did really appreciate all the meaningful fight choreography, but when I got to the end of the movie, I sort of really wish that they pushed it farther in that direction. Cause I remember feeling a little bit disappointed that like when we saw the, the promo for the, the scaffolding fight, right? Before the movie came out, I was like, oh, I'm really pumped yeah. now. I'm excited that, for some Jackie yeah, Chan that bullshit. Is the, and ultimately- That is the last one of that kind. After that, it's straight fantasy. Exactly, yeah. which is like, you know, I, I don't think, you know, I, I don't think that that effect is impossible to achieve with also the CGI rings flying around. Yeah. But I wish that they had a bit more of that aesthetic, like, yeah. painted out into the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Because, like, ultimately, that one scene is the best example of that in the whole movie. And when I saw the promo for it, I was just like, oh, this is probably one of the best ones. But uh, it was, yeah. like, really the only one that stood out to me. Yeah. The it's rest like a of comedy it was, like, movie it's... telling all its best jokes in the trailer. 
It's right, exactly. Yeah. So I, I felt a little bit disappointed by that. Um, I like again, like there's a lot of not necessarily plot holes, but like plot gaps that could have been filled by a line or two of dialogue that I wish had been like put in there yeah. to you know kind of like fill some of those. Um, because I mean, like you know, at, but at the end of the day, like it's a very good looking movie. I like the way that all the characters act and interact with each other. And like, you know, I, I absolutely fucking love, not that there was a ton of this in the movie, but I, I love all of the fucking, you know, like the guardian lions and the, uh, you know, like those the, the... giant cat bears stole my heart. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, no, I love great. them. And, uh, so like, I, I, I really liked all the visuals of the movie and like, I, I did like a lot of it, but there were some elements where it's just like okay I i'm having to get myself to allow this to just be like a, a shut your head off and popcorn flick and enjoy those elements whereas yeah. usually i don't tend to want to do that and though there are other problems with the mcu as a whole like i i definitely it, it felt like maybe a just a tiny bit under the bar in terms of like rational explanations for things happening that yeah. i usually at least in my own head attribute to mcu <laughs> movies which may be a me thing, because there definitely are a lot of gaps that I am aware of, but, but it, the, you know. The speed of this movie, I, I'm with you. There, Like I said, there are yeah. a lot of hand-wavy moments, and, like, that all the movies have, but this one I felt like every 10 minutes I was just like, all right, just get to the next scene and you'll be fine. Right, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I enjoyed the characters, I, I enjoyed the visuals, and of what was there, I did enjoy the, the fight stuff. And I, I fucking, I, Wu, uh, Zhu Wenwu is a, a great villain. For Love that actor. I don't think I've seen that actor in anything else. Like, I was stoked for Michelle Yeoh, and he, like, stole the show for me. I thought yeah, he was no, really he good. was very good, and I, I, I felt like they walked a really good line on doing, you know, that character, which was a, essentially an amalgamation of two extremely racist characters, yeah. and making it work, like, is pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. uh, ultimately, you know, not without issue, but it, it was it was pretty good. So, 7 out of 10, I, I agree with you guys. But yeah, You know, Jeff, here's, uh... here's the thing. I got some good news for you. This movie has gotten excellent reviews, has broken records despite still being in a pandemic in terms of box office us and a lot Which of people maybe bad for other reasons <laughs> maybe bad for other reasons but for your problems in particular i am sure you're not the only one saying there wasn't enough martial arts in this movie so you know we're getting a sequel and it's yeah, probably yeah. gonna have more shenanigans in it and uh you know if the fucking sequel like even if there's more fucking martial arts shenanigans mixed with cgi if there's martial arts shenanigans mixed with like fucking running around goddamn fin fang foom i'm pretty about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no but, the uh, amount of sonic the hedgehog vibes the back half of this movie gave me was pretty astounding <laughs> just running on the backs of green dragons and collecting collecting 10 rings i remember that level from sonic unleashed it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> to be fair i think you could probably find sonic references and almost anything that you watch call <laughs> i no i i this was not a sonic reference but the the uh no, man it definitely spoke to that that part of me look, in a look big in, way. But, uh, to yeah. colin's defense i was thinking oh yeah this this is some sonic stuff too so <laughs> yeah no no i feel you with the fucking with the rings and the fucking running around spirals like the fucking dragons yeah i, I definitely feel you but um yeah i think that's a good place for us to wrap up here today thank you for listening to the common geeking program again i have been your host jeff levitt uh if you want to find me i've got a uh, a youtube channel where i do toy reviews that is alchemist prime reviews and uh, again i've been joined by colin and chowder do either of you have things you want to toss out there yeah, just go to commongeekingprogram.com. My name is Colin. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. Got a couple shows. Dice Populize doing some cool shit. I really like doing these episodes about the movies. And I just did some new artwork for How You Doing that, uh-oh, I got to put on the Common Geeking Program website. Cool. Let me go do that. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Timel or Chowder, whichever you prefer. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Timel Chowder. Uh, you can also... Uh, I'm also on Dice Populi. Uh, I'm currently DMing the current story arc in Dicey Waters, called Meant to Be, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's pretty just, it's pretty freaking baller. So I just yeah. I just I just finished editing one of Chowder's episodes, and the fucking balls on this man doing some of the shit he thinks he can get away with. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of questions about fucking how that shit was set up and and what was you know briefed before you beforehand but uh, uh he's he's free will in a, in a few regards <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, cool. no, I'm enjoying that that arc so far. So definitely go listen to that show. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, our next episode of this podcast will be another one of our briefing programs where we talk about the geek news this time of the uh, of the month of September. So that will be on the first Monday or first Friday in October, which is also the first of October. So that's I'm just going to warn you guys right now. There was a lot of Star Trek news, and there's going to be another oh, Halo boy. Infinite thing before then. So. I'm sorry in advance. You're not cool. forgiven. <laughs> and then our, our next episode like this, where we just talk about another piece of media, will be on the third Friday in October, which will be the 15th of October. So uh, look forward to those. But anyway, thank you for listening and subscribing and everything that you do for us. And we'll talk to you next time. Ciao. Bye-bye. Dirt. Dirt. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. This episode of the Common Geeking Program was hosted by Jeff Levitt, featuring Colin Ketchin and Timo Children. The Common Geeking Program was created by Jeff Levitt and Colin Ketchin, with the music by Colin Ketchin. This episode was edited by me, Time Old Children. This episode was brought to you by Sean! Uh, be sure to check out thecommongeekingprogram.com for more... For common geeking program goodness, as always, stay in touch, stay tuned, and thank you for listening to this podcast. Ciao! It's not too late. The poison's gonna kill me.
come and save me. I know who the killer is, Ethan. I can prove your innocence. Congratulations, Ethan. You succeeded. You're the father that I have been looking for all these years. The man capable of giving his own life to save his son. You got what you... I'm afraid that's not possible. Your lady friend knows my little secret. I don't intend to end my days in prison. I'm going to have to kill you both. I'm sorry. You are not spared.